You can pick up some Side Surf Cake Studio merch at shop.sidesurfcakes.com. Your friends will ask, what's Side Surf Cake Studio? And you can say, oh, let me show you. Natalie Side Surf here of Side Surf Cake Studio, and I'm gonna show you how I made an egg-themed cake. The first thing I'm working on is the edible bowl. So I take a real bowl and I just dust it with cornstarch. Then I dust a non-stick mat with cornstarch and I roll out some ivory modeling chocolate. Now I just lay that modeling chocolate over top and I work it into the real bowl. The turntable makes trimming that modeling chocolate just a little bit easier. You just spin and trim. There is no easier way to make an edible bowl than this. And when it comes to cakes, any time I have an opportunity to save some time, I do it. Now I set that bowl aside to let the chocolate firm up while I work on my edible whisk. I drew a single whisk wire to use as a template, then I place it under a large sheet of parchment paper and I trace that shape five times. I used an extruder full of gray fondant and I made five long strips. Then I line my strings up to match the drawings on the parchment and I set them aside to dry in their new whisk wire shape. And now it is cake time. Here I have some blue velvet cake, which is the same thing as red velvet cake, only it's blue. I'm cutting out four round layers of cake the size of an egg yolk. Then I trim the edges ever so slightly to round them out. I'm placing a layer of yellow modeling chocolate over the cake, then I trim away the excess, and then I work that chocolate around the cake. All right, now I just cover the remaining three cakes. Let's set these yolks aside while I go back to my whisk. The edible whisk wires are dry, so now I'm painting them silver on both sides. A lot of you ask how I learned how to make these cakes. So I'm actually a self-taught cake decorator. So basically what I do is I get my hands on different edible materials, and then I experiment and I problem solve until I find new ways to use them. What's really neat is even after a decade of doing this, I still find new and innovative ways to use edible materials. And experimenting while making these videos actually really helps. If you like my cake experimentations, then let me know by giving this video a like. And if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, do it now because I post a new cake every week just for you. And now I'm poking a few holes into a piece of modeling chocolate where I'll place my whisk wires. Remember earlier how I told you about how I learn by experimenting and trying out new techniques? <laughs> well, sometimes my experimentations work and then sometimes they don't. And this is a case of the latter. Basically, these super thin fonded wires are just too fragile to work with. I should have known better than to use fondant because I am way more familiar with modeling chocolate. As you can see here, we have a break, and then another break, and then another break. And my attempt to save them with a little bit of melted white chocolate is not working. So what else other than a whisk would be on a table with eggs? Maybe measuring cups or bacon, <laughs> or maybe a carton, huh? All right, I'm going for it. So I'm going to make up for my broken whisk by making an egg carton. I'm dusting a real egg carton with some cornstarch, and I'm covering it while it's flipped over in some blue modeling chocolate. I microwave this chocolate so that it's super soft. That way, it'll fill into all those carton creases nice and easy. Thank you. 
I placed it in the fridge for a few minutes so that that chocolate firms up. Then I bring it back out and I'm ready to peel it away from the carton. I'm absolutely destroying this egg carton, you guys. <laughs> I am pleasantly surprised with how well this worked. Like the shape is there and other than a few areas needing some fixes, I've got myself a good looking edible egg carton. So right now I have a carton of nine eggs, which I don't even think is a thing. So uh, <laughs> I'm trimming off a strip of three to make this a six pack. Then I just fill in any empty areas with some modeling chocolate and seal everything up. Now I don't get to make my cakes shimmer very often, but I do today because foam egg cartons shimmer. This looks great. That carton went from chocolate to foam really fast. Now what's an egg carton without some egg shells, right? I'm mixing some food safe molding putty and I'm working it around a couple of real eggs. The top of one and the bottom of another. I let the putty set for about 20 minutes and then I work the mold off the eggs. I snip a little snip down each mold, and that's gonna make it easier when it's time for me to release the chocolate from the mold. I'm thinking ahead for once. Now I fill both with melted white chocolate, and I shake the excess chocolate into a bowl. So I want these eggshells to be hollow, just like the real thing. I chilled the chocolate eggs in the freezer for a few minutes, and now it's time to pop them out of the mold. See, these are legit. I knew they would be. I am very pleased. I love the cracked edges. I'm keeping these shells cracked, but I also want to include a whole egg. A whole egg full of cake, that is. So I'm making some cake ball dough. I just crumble up the leftover cake scraps from my egg yolk cakes from earlier, and I mix in a dollop of green buttercream. This deep green color is really pretty. <laughs> And it's a really strange color for the inside of an egg, which is a win-win in my book. Now I'm doing something that I've never done before. And unlike the whisk debacle, this technique actually works. I've got my chocolate eggshells and I'm warming the edge in a pan. Then I fill it with my cake ball dough. I warm up the other eggshell in the pan and then I place it on top just like a plastic Easter egg. So now I've got my whole egg and my cracked eggs placed in my carton. Remember that chocolate bowl from earlier? Well, it is firm and it's ready to pop out of the real bowl. I just flip it over and it releases easily thanks to that cornstarch. Just look at that beauty. <laughs> oh, I can't whistle. <laughs> So now let's place the yolks in the bowl. Four is looking like a crowd, so I'm gonna take one out. This is now going to be a bowl of three raw eggs. For the raw egg whites, I'm using gelatin. I sprinkled two gelatin packets over eight tablespoons of water. I let it bloom. Then I microwave it until the gelatin is dissolved in the water. I wanna make sure that my egg white color is spot on. So I'm using a real egg for my color reference. The gelatin is slightly yellow already, but I think it needs just like a little bit more, a wee, a wee tiny bit more yellow in there. There it is, that's raw egg white yellow. It's like a new name for a color swatch. Raw egg white yellow. Once it's cooled slightly, I just pour my gelatin egg whites into my chocolate bowl of cake egg yolks. And to make the bowl shiny, I'm brushing a very small amount of grapeseed oil onto it. And there you have it, an egg-themed cake. I love it, I love this cake. It's just, it's clean and it's nice and it reminds me of morning time. Now let's cut the cakes. So many textures in this one. 
a ceramic bowl, gelatinous egg whites, delicate eggshells, foam carton. I am sold. This cake is the best. How would you like your eggs today? Over easy, scrambled, or cake? I had a bit of a hard time with that whisk, but you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet, right? You can get yourself some Side Surf Cake Studio merch, like this very t-shirt that I have on right now at shop.sidesurfcakes.com. Like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next week for another cake.